enjoy using my imagination lots and pretty much you can create anything. Like there's no instructions to follow or anything. sure because last year we had it in a way different spot and I thought that would work way better but we got a puppy so she'd eat all of it so I wasn't really sure how this was going to turn out but I think it turned out really good. Well, there's a lot of time and effort into it, and there's a bit of stuff from everywhere. <laughs> Family, friends, even local stores, anything, pretty much. You can find fairy garden stuff anywhere. <laughs> um, kind of. If, I kind of just wandered around. If I saw stuff that would go perfectly, you could pretty much find stuff anywhere. They really don't need anything to make one, just your imagination. You could either, like, you don't need anything from a store. You can either ju even just use nature, like, you can make little umbrellas with leaves and sticks, or like a little teepee, or <laughs> an umbrella. Yeah, little house. I like planting flowers. Why? They're pretty. Do you have any favorites? Any favorite colors of flowers? Pink ones. Lilies. Lilies? Yeah. Why lilies? The bees make honey with them. That's pretty cool. Tell me about this lovely garden. What's so special about it? Uh, we want fairies to go into it. So we built them a house, hey? Yeah. We collected sticks and moss. We glued it all together. And we left a little door, hey? Yeah. You want to show them? Put some little guys out there. Yeah. Yeah. We planted a bunch of orange flowers, but we think that the fairies probably planted all these purple ones because they've been showing up every day, new flowers. What do you guys like about garden? Uh, it looks very nice. And you guys have been helping me water all my flowers, hey? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wanted to start a beautiful fair garden just like that one, what tips would you give them? Uh, a little bit of flowers. And maybe build a little fairy house? 
Wie je aan. Because we we feed them food. Uh, flower food. And now tell me what's so special about your garden. You get to jump on them and and, and, and jump across. God could love a child in this condition. God could love a child in this condition. Go tell it on the mountain. Say go tell it to the judge. Pray for freedom. Pray for mercy. mercy. If I sin, Lord, it was all for love. God could love a child in this condition. God could love a child in this condition. God could love a child in this condition. Yeah. Throwing it in the garbage, I'm done. From what I understand, several years still right. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many times in the Up that way. He could do anything and everything.
about gardening, um, it's a huge stress relief for me. So just going out and um, weeding and then having a final product afterwards, it's almost like coloring. Uh, and uh, it's very peaceful, it's getting back to nature, even though it's right in town, right in my own, own yard, so yeah. Well, it's me with my own two hands. So I started it from scratch. I had a vision. I completed that vision. I'm, I even have more area to uh, add on to that. So, and the rock garden, you know, I love, I love that little uh, dry riverbed. I love that it's, there's a function to it as well. Um, start with a, found, a good foundation. Um, figure out how much time you want to put into your garden before you actually uh, start, start building it. So if you want a low maintenance garden, perennial gardens are really great. Um, if you want something with really bright color, annual gardens are really great. So it's all about as well how much maintenance you want to do. So even though I put in a lot of work um, at the start, I'm looking forward to not necessarily having so much maintenance throughout the year, throughout the summer. What I love about gardening is the fact that after a long day, I can come out here and relax. It's quiet, hopefully it's warm out, it's perfect. Um, what's special about this garden is that when we bought this property, there wasn't a garden. So since we've moved here, our family comes out pretty much every couple nights and we mostly work on it together. So it's something that we've created ourselves. Thank you for having us. <laughs>
I'm Janice Sabalski and this is year three of my fairy garden. I've added a lot of things this year at the suggestion of family and friends. My granddaughter suggested I really needed to have a schoolhouse and I totally agree with that. So this year I have not one but two schoolhouses and also a school bus. Uh, another friend of mine noticed that we have a Buddhist temple and we have churches and she pointed out that we should have a more variety of religious denominations. So I've added a mosque and I've added a synagogue complete with a little Torah on the table for the rabbis to study. Um, we've also added uh, some more camping things. I've got an Airstream trailer and um, a couple of tents and little trailers and I've sort of updated the area where we had a little bit of a play area with a fair. Uh, we've got a full-blown fair with a petting zoo, a theater, a ferris wheel, uh, lemonade, candy floss, the whole thing. So it's, it's been really exciting. I think I'm at the point where I probably have to expand my fairy garden again. I expanded it two years ago, but I think we're on the verge of having to add more space to it. So it's been a really fun time. Uh, one of the things that's been special this year is that my grandchildren actually came and did the initial setup of the garden. Usually I set it up and they come to visit in July and then they get to play in it. But this year I still had everything inside when they came in April, May. And so I took all my bins of fairy garden things out into the carport and I said, fly at it. So they had a really nice time 
creating and setting up on their own and they did a really good job of it too. I really, there's nothing that I really want to change with what they did. I've had a lot of help this year too from Salt's Nursery. They gave me some really good suggestions for um, uh, different plants that would work in a fairy garden and they have turned out really well. So to thank them for their efforts, I have created a Salt's Greenhouse Corner in my fairy garden as well. Mother Mary, she was on her knees, she had way less money, she had needs, she got caught stealing diapers at the corner store, and I said, well, well, what do we got here, five finger discount in a one way mirror, she'll do time, or Jesus will be led away, yeah, from the boss to the prophets and the ancient for hire, three wise people flying all can't buy, praise the Lord, pass the admonition, God could love a child, in this condition, God could love a child, in this condition, God could love a child. In this condition, God could love a child. In this condition, go. Tell it on the mountain. Say, go. Tell it to the judge. Pray for freedom. Pray for mercy. If I sin, Lord, it was all for love. Find or can't find. Praise the Lord, pass the admonition. God could love a child in this condition. 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 Yeah. Filling it in the garbage. I'm done. From what I understand, several years to write. Yeah? Yeah. So many times in the film. But anyway, yeah. you want to use it that way. He could do anything and everything. Well, it's too bad. And it's too sad. But I'm in love with you Just love me Oh, darling, love me What can I do? I 
I'm still in love with you I guess I'll never see the light I stay alone most every night Since I fell for you Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we don't have a mic, mainly because I think we have loud enough voices to project yourself. And um, this is a celebration. I'd like to introduce Clay Batsandowski. He's a counselor from the District of Chemin, and he's going to bring, bring greetings on behalf of the district. Uh, greetings on behalf of the District of Chetwin. Uh, thank you to Leo and, and Janice for all the work they do with this program. Uh, I'm not a gardener myself, but I can appreciate uh, this, the work that people do. It's definitely a healthy activity to, to be involved with. Everybody needs that safe place to go, and whether it be exercise, music, art, gardening, it all helps, and I know my family is into it quite a bit. And uh, thanks to everybody else for, for participating in this. It, Definitely has a positive influence on Chetwin and, and makes it all look very nice. Thanks very much. You're going to hear from Clay quite often. Clay is also director of the Communication Society and helps out throughout the year. Now we'll hear from uh, Charlie Lasser, who is the chair of the Chetwin Communication Society. And I'd like to uh, bring greetings uh, on behalf of the Communication mm -hmm. Society to the here and uh, the uh, this is the 16th year and we're very glad to see it going and uh, I uh, myself I haven't entered in it because my garden is about 1200 acres of hay and I don't think it would be fair but uh, it's wonderful to see this to see all of you people here because this is the spirit of Chetwin and that's very important that we that we have everybody participating in the community. So I'd just like to say again, thanks for coming, and uh, uh, I will have to be leaving in a few minutes because you wouldn't believe this, but I got two bulls coming from my cow herd, which will be here in about a half an hour, so I'm gonna have to leave very soon. So thanks for coming, enjoy yourselves, bye. <laughs> Clay, uh, could you bring the certificates out? And um, each year, what we do in the beautiful gardens, communities in Loom, we talk to various groups, and they give us funding plus also prizes. So the uh, District of Chetwin, Clay, you want to present yourself for the District of Chetwin? Oh, I didn't uh, fish that one out, but yes, oh, I accept. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> Super Value has provided all the food for us. The cadets have cooked it and have received the full membership in Peace FM Chet TV for one year um, from Urban Systems. Home Hardware, Louise, could you stand please and come on over here and Clay will present you with the Home Hardware uh, Award. And can we have a picture, Linda, of Louise getting this please? This is really incredible that they give over $1,000 for the If you have not entered the contest, look at the prizes and next year you will. <laughs> it's really Thank well you. done. <laughs> Thank you, Louise. Urban Systems has donated two charter memberships to the radio TV station. The cadets will get one and the TLC thrift shop will get one. 
the Red Ribbon Award, rhubarb to roses, and you'll see all the shrubs. Each shrub is worth $50 each. So many of you will be taking the shrubs home. Pinewood Mobile Home Park also contributes, as well as Does Joe. Does Joe has a special part of our heart because they were the first one to get the Joanne Roberts Memorial Award. When the flood happened a few years ago, they didn't ask people to just go ahead and uh, if they can help. They went and they cleaned that whole area up and never charged a cent. So Does Joe and the McLeod Lake Indian Band uh, were the founders of the Joanne Roberts Memorial Award and the quite essential quilters have a square that they give out each year. The green ribbon, and uh, we're elevating IGA uh, to red ribbon. They have provided all the bread and all the potato chips. Your dollar store with more have donated all the kids' prizes. Salt's Nursery, Memory Lane Greenhouse. Salt's has donated some gift certificates for next year, but Memory Lane has given us 16 begonias. Wow. So some of you will be taking a begonia home. So that's really nice. IRC Kachak also donates Schwab and Associates, QP Local 3052 of the District of Chemin has uh, donated the cost for the Joanne Roberts Memorial Award. And you'll see that because Joanne was a member of the union. Simply for the catering, you're eating their food, you're eating their salads. Excellent. And um, Liz, you can see that right there. Uh, the trees underneath Liz, and I'll get rid of this color. <laughs> Liz, uh, right in front of Liz is 144 Douglas fir trees that are acclimatized for Chetwin. That means that you can put them in. They've had two or three years of snow here. So any leftover, we're going to put into Burn. So Nathan and uh, Ireland and all the kids in a few years will to say, I have a tree like that. So it's going to grow majestic. So let's go to the top. And we're going to have Marlon from Chet TV. And he's going to um, talk about kids. All right, so I had the pleasure of doing kids, which it was very impressive because they are better gardeners than I am. So not that doesn't say a lot. I'm just saying I was impressed. Um, so kids are encouraged to grow their own gardens, whether they be flowers, vegetables, or, fair, or a fairy garden. And so kids have a start in gardening, and, are, and bit by bit, they are growing like a bug. So we will start with, should I go from top bottom or it doesn't matter it doesn't matter well I'm Diane's gonna, gonna help out Diane and Janice are going to help me with the prizes they, uh, I don't even know where up. they are <laughs> oh I thought it so yeah just give us a moment no you can call them. Okay. doesn't matter look at the, the Diane has uh, written the names on them and you're gonna have to hug every one of the kids <laughs> Okay, and we will start with Ireland, who did a wonderful Yay. job. Hey, and a very, very good garden, very impressive, very hard too. All right, now we are calling up Rella Roberts. Where are you? Hey, how's it going? Really cool guy. I like this guy. His name's Nathan Dunn. Yay! Some really big rocks in his garden. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Now, Taylor Van Horn. Congrats to all of you kids. 
it, then encourage other kids, other your friends to join because we love your gardens. Okay? That wraps it up for me. I can't read. Uh, new Gardens. Uh, Warren is going to be presenting the new garden category. How appropriate that the new guy at the radio station. <laughs> so the uh, new garden category is to encourage residents to start a garden to beautify their homes. A new garden is considered from one to two years old. So uh, Janice will help me uh, yeah, congratulate the winners. So in second place, Jen Pierce. Is Jen not here? No. She must have got lost. Ah, she's lost then. Well then, we'll go right to first place. Gina Dunn. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. And what does she get? Oh, and you get a gift certificate. Those lovely silver spots. Yeah, you get the two silver frames. I can read that much thing. Right. Yeah, 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 I got that. Yeah. Gina Dunn gets uh, two silver cranes and a $100 gift certificate. Thank you. That's pretty darn good. Thank you. Now I call on Andrew, and he's going to give away the business public garden. I've never had to present any sort of award ever, so I have no idea what I'm doing, but bear with me. Nice to meet you. Uh, businesses are encouraged to make their, you know, their storefronts, their entryways, that kind of thing, uh, welcoming, you know, plants, flowers, make it nice, make it inviting. So this year we've had three groups who've done exactly this, and I'd like to also, Janice? No, Aunt Linda. Oh, Linda, sorry. Linda. Linda. Yeah. There you are. I'd like to have Linda help me present the three awards. All right. Well, thank you, Andrew. I was honored to be selected as a judge for this year's Beautiful Gardens. Uh, as a newcomer to town, I can honestly say that, uh, that the beauty of this town and its gardens has been a welcoming presence during my time here. I was particularly impressed with the beauty possessed by each of the contenders for this award, and hard work, have, hard work has been uh, put into growing and maintaining all of these gardens. Coming in third place is a business whose large garden and wide variety of plants truly makes visitors feel welcomed into their establishment. Give it up for Lakeview Inns and Suites. Right. In second place is a garden that both greets people and grabs their attention upon arrival. Put your hands together for Chetwin Glass. And now our first place winner, a garden that anyone would be proud to have as part of their home. This garden's variety of plants, coupled with its vibrant colors, truly sets this garden apart from the competition. Let's hear it for Gwilym Gardens. <laughs> well, we'll make sure tomorrow that they come to the studios and we'll get photographs of them. <laughs> Maybe they're still at the museum. All right, and now the award for Fairy Box or Special Gardens. And this award is to people with who, uh, whose imagination and, and uh, creates gardens in boxes, uh, hedges, and areas set aside for fairies. Here to help hand out the awards is Louise from Home Hardware. Coming in third place is a garden that adds to the beauty of its property. The variety of plants, colors, and garden ornaments make this garden a work of art. Let's hear it for Brenda Turand. In second place is a garden created in memory of Barb Foster, a Chetwind resident who was known for her love of gardening. Its combination of plants, colors, and beautiful garden ornaments is a true celebra celebration of life on the exterior of this property. Put your hands together for Church of Nazarene. And now for our first place. Oh, sorry. 
and she gets a shrub. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. When, yeah, go get a grab a shrub that you like, okay? Where's over here? Oh, right here. <laughs> And now for our first place winner, a man who has clearly put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into his garden. This garden is home to an extensive array of plants and vegetables and even has its own greenhouse. A big round of applause for our first place winner, Chuck McInnes. Yay! <laughs> Simon, you'll have to come and help him carry this stuff away. Simon, you'll have to come up and help carry this stuff, okay? <laughs> Want to talk a little bit about Chuck for a second? Thank you. Chuck is receiving a $50 gift certificate to Salt, a shrub, and a $100 gift certificate to Super Value. <laughs> Linda enjoyed judging this year and fell in love with Chuck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That'll look very nice. Very nice. Now I'd like to call on Clay Bazin. That was no. We're, I missed you. Where I'm off. Leo, forgetting about me as usual. <laughs> so, yeah. I made up here without falling down. That's half the battle. So. Uh, Kick it off from there. I've got a very specific script here yes, to follow yes, because yes, Leo doesn't yes, trust yes. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, this is the most prestigious garden award and can only be won once in a lifetime. The winner of the established garden award means that the gardener has worked to be creative, maintain the health of all plants, and created a garden wonderland. The mayor and Janice did the judging this year, so if you want to blame someone for not winning, she's right there. It's not my fault. Screwing up your names right now, though, might be my fault. Um, so an honorable mentions first. First is Alden and Mary Beth Leslie. Um, they'll be receiving a wheelbarrow and a shrub. I'll take Leo's word for that. Yes, I found the right, I found the right page. There we go. Teamwork. Yes. All right. Second honorable mention. Oh. And also a there begonia. Go. And our second honorable mention, which I'm assuming is going to be winning the same thing, is Connie bit. Clark. Connie is going to be winning. Uh, Sandy's standing in for uh, Connie. She's going to win a butterfly plant stand, a shrub, and a begonia. All right, I think I'm clear to move on to the big ones now. All right, third place is Pauline Nylander. Is that right? Is there a Pauline Nylander? There Hi. she is, all right. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. And Pauline wins a Tiki Torch, $50 gift certificate from Salt, and a Begonia. You also get a begonia. Yeah. Yeah. You take a begonia too. Okay. Just wait a second. Hi. All right. Second place is Asuncion Abonita. Asuncion wins um, a maple leaf chair, a shrub, a hundred dollars gift certificate from Super Value, and a begonia. We'll wait until all the stuff goes. Oh, we need help. Come on in here. And a begonia too. This one. Is yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's your choice. Okay. All right. And our first place grand prize winner for the Established Gardens Award this year is Sherry Chappelle. Oh. 
Sherry, Sherry wins the bistro table with two chairs, a hundred dollar gift certificate, and a begonia. Is Charlie still sitting in the chair? No. Okay. So Sherry wins the established garden. Oh, I see how it looks like. The Grand Gardener Award is going to be presented by Clay Bazandowski from the District of Chewin. So this year, this year we recognize a person who's given herself for years and making her family's business attractive and welcoming. Just a personal note, this um, business is quite the staple and Chetwin been here for many years, so long as, uh, in fact, that I used to get haircuts at this particular building. Uh, so that was a little while ago. <laughs> She's gone the distance in getting flowers at the entrance of her business and taking care of them. The Cat Shack is a model for all businesses and Elsie Ross is a model citizen for making our business community prettier and welcoming. And today, Elsie's not with us, but her family is. If you'd like to come and accept this. selecting the begonias, um, the people that have not got begonias, the first and second places people, I'll be handing those out. I just uh, slipped my mind, so I have enough for every contestant, so you'll get a begonia. So don't go away without one. And they are from Betty Deck, and uh, they're really beautiful. And they'll bloom all uh, summer. Liz is yes. up. Almost. That's okay, no worries. There's no rush. No rush. Try not to get poked in the eye. She'll like that. Thank you. Okay, so the last award today is the Joanne Memorial, Roberts Memorial Award. And I'd like to get Cindy Langford up here from the Quint Essential. Quint Essential Quilters. Quilters to present the award. I'll just move over a little bit here. Thank you. Okay, so um, Leo and Janice Sobolski started the Beautiful Gardens in Ch of Chetwin as a part of the Communities in Bloom program 16 years ago with counselors, uh, counselors Rose and Joanne Roberts. We took great, they took great pride in Chetwin's participation in the Communities in Bloom program in our community and encouraged everyone to participate in the Beautiful Gardens Club. Janice further added to the contest by adding the fairy category. This year, the Beautiful Garden in Chetwin, uh, of Chetwin, uh, Communities in Bloom contest started being worked on by Leo when he was at the Corbin, Corbin Lodge for Cancer Patients in Prince George. Leo started planning it there and Janice was his runner back and forth to Chetwin as well as advocating the fairy gardens. Without their dedication and beautiful gardens of Chetwin would not continue. Leo and Janice Sobolski are the recipients of the 2017 Joanne Roberts Memorial Award. Agenda on uh, on the beautiful garden, but I made it to page three, so she never saw it. So this oh, is a total so surprise to her. <laughs> we really appreciate the Joanne Roberts Memorial Award because it means a lot to me, especially now.
That's about it, ladies and gentlemen. I think there's burgers in the back, right? I think so. There's lots of food, so enjoy yourself. And if you go out and talk to people, say, especially enter the contest. Jet TV and Peace FM are dedicated to the safety of the communities of the peace. We will interrupt regular programming and bring you emergency bulletins in the case of serious road closures, floods, evacuation, natural gas leaks, oil spills, fires or explosions in the peace. 
your community TV station in collaboration with Peace FM will update you about gathering points where evacuees will meet and where emergency social service resources are available to you during and after an event. Tune into Chet TV at channel 655 on Bell and TELUS, channel 55 on air and channel 40 on Eastlink. And Peace FM is heard on 94.5 FM in Chetwind and 104.1 in Dawson Creek. Community TV and radio are here for you 24 hours per day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. Sudbury until 10 after 6 and of course I did not even have time to have a bath last night so uh, we're known as the dirty uh, dirty seven today and in fact most fiddlers I know are uh, a breed unto themselves sort of stuff I mean a, a fiddler never belts you with his fiddle look I wipe more liquor off my chin than the other fellow drank well you want to believe that <laughs> <laughs> 